Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our uh, next session on habits, routines, and rituals. You know, I, I can't get the pregame music out of my head here. Jan and I always do a little dancing before Jerusalem. we get started. Just Jerusalem pump it up. Is the, Jerusalem is the name of the of the yeah. Piece. Absolutely, yeah. So, guys, if you can be so kind, because we are broadcasting on YouTube and LinkedIn, as always, and if you can put in your comments that you can hear us and see us, yeah, uh, Mika is there, Finland greets the world, good evening, every second Thursday seems to be great, happy ritual and routine so far. Yes, exactly, you're already here, you've already got a really good habit. I hope it's a habit, but is it a routine? We're going to find out here today. Yeah, I will check uh, my, you know, LinkedIn, whether, you know, people are able to be there. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it works, you know, so I, you know, LinkedIn works also. So if you can, okay. if you can also some guys are both working, okay. If, if somebody from LinkedIn actually can, you know, put in comment and you can hear us and see us. It, it looks like my LinkedIn on the phone works. We're so. good. Monica, Tomas, they're saying, yes, yes, okay. we can hear you. Let's okay. get started. Let's, let's kick it off. Let's kick it off. So, Lisa, uh, you sent me two very broad articles about those, you know, topics. Uh, and obviously, I have my own, you know, opinion. <laughs> but it, you can, you know, kick it off, basically, this discussion. I would love to, because here's the thing. Not everybody knows the difference between a habit, a routine, a ritual. And as Jan and I were discussing, what are the differences between these? Do we have a morning routine? Do we have morning habits? Is there a ritual in our practice? We started to realize maybe we don't even agree on the definitions. So we're here to find out. I'm going to kick it off and I'm going to tell you what are the differences between all three, at least how I'm going to define them here today. All right. And then you can disagree in the comments. <laughs> So a habit is something that comes and it happens for you and it's relatively unconscious. So when you go to the bathroom, what do you do right after? I hope, wash your hands, right? It happens automatically. You don't think, it's not an effort. After you go to the bathroom, you don't think, oh, do I feel like washing my hands right now? No, it's a routine, it's a habit. You're already doing it. A routine is something different, a routine takes mental energy to you get you to, to do it. Yeah. You have to think about it. It has to be conscious because it's kind of hard to do, right? <laughs> so if we're talking about a routine, I have a morning routine where I take a cold shower. We always talk about the Wim Hof method. I It is never a habit for me because every time I do it, I'm not just like, oh, la, 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 I have a warm shower. Now I make it a really cold shower. I go, okay, be strong. You want this. You need this. So that is not a habit. That is a routine because I have to consciously make the effort. And every morning I ask myself, do I really want to do this? Are you sure? Don't you want to just skip one day? Like, isn't today the day you don't want to do it? Now, here's where it starts to get tricky. Rituals. Rituals are different from habits and routines. Maybe this is what we'll discuss. Because habits, routines, habits are unconscious. We have them all day long because our brain needs shortcuts. Routines, we decided, and normally they're all about times, efficiency, performance. How do we get to the next level? How do we get better? How do we get the next career step? What do I need to do to break my record when I'm running? Spirituality is just the opposite. It's not about connecting with the self. It's not about the time. It's not about the efficiency. It's about letting go. And when we're letting go, we're trying to connect with something maybe bigger. So for example, you might have a spiritual ritual where um, you, know, you connect with nature. I don't know. You might have a ritual where you welcome in the weekend where you're clearly separating the end of the working week to welcome in your time of relaxation. So rituals are not about efficiency and time and getting things done. They're about letting go of needing to get things done. And they're usually tied to something bigger, not short term, I have a goal, but longer term connection to, again, spirituality, nature, the community, something more connected, more grand scheme. 
So how is that? What do you think? Yeah, and I see you're deep in thought. What's going through your yeah. mind as I say? So uh, yeah, I, I give you uh, some reasoning why, you know, routines, habits, and rituals are so important in our lives, okay? Uh, because our brain works like pattern recognition machine. Our brain doesn't like, you know, changes. Our brain actually doesn't like to think. Okay. We like it's pretty lazy, right? <laughs> the brain, the brain function number one is survival, amygdala, basically, right? Survival, fight, flee, or freeze. And the second big, you know, task brain is having is uh, energy budgeting, basically, right? Yeah. Whatever you do. And then everything else. And because why pattern recognition machine? Because whatever is happening around you. It's like, you know, your senses, because your brain is in the scalp, seeing, hearing nothing. That's why we have senses, like, you know, our ears, eyes, and, and so on, you know, right? So if we would not have senses, then, you know, uh, brain would be useless, okay? So our senses are, in fact, bringing reality into the brain, okay? Now. What a brain is doing, actually, brain is not supposed to react to each and every situation differently, but our brain is basically uh, predicting what happened in the past, you know, whatever is in your long-term memory, okay, whatever happened in the past, you know, our uh, brain try to really recognize patterns and behave in that, you know, way, okay? Give you one example. Before this session, I've got, you know, uh, uh, Yeri Lehetska is now 72 in the top 100 uh, tennis player, you know, uh, right? But still, we would like to be in top 10. And it's a huge jump, okay? And he already plays with some, you know, top players. He trained, and when I was with him at Wimbledon, he, he trained there with people like Djokovic and so on. But we need to be much more consistent. He's able to beat them in one set or whatever, you know, those guys. But we need to be much more consistent with, with like Djokovic or, you know, uh, Tsitsipas and all of those people. OK. And the, the question is how to really create, you know, great habits, routines and rituals also to make yes. sure that that performance is consistent. OK. Because with all respect to my player, to Yiri, he's a great guy. He's 20 years old. If you compare him with Nadal, Nadal again yesterday, he almost lost the match already. He was losing 2-0, but he was able to return, you know, back because of his great, you know, routines and rituals, right? That's why this is so important in, in our lives. Because I tell you what is happening. If you do how skill is built and how skill is represented in your brain, okay? Skill equals more or less talent. Those are genes you are born with. Okay, maybe you have some more talent. Somebody got less talent, whatever. Skill equals talent multiplied by a, uh, by a force, you know, right? How much force you will have. A lot of people think people like Ronaldo, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, they were like, you know, fantastic and they, they were super talented guys. Yeah. Those guys they train one third more time than the other guys okay that's why effort was one third higher and that's why they created sooner what we call myelin myelin is basically the space between synapses and it's a very it's a very strong connection in your you know brain it's called myelin you don't need to if you do something you like very often myelin is created but you don't need to remember what you can remember if you have a lot of myelins and that's where, you know, routines, habits and rituals are fitting. If you have a lot of myelins in your brain, you can do that activity under the huge pressure, under the huge mental yes. pressure, number one. And you can do that activity very fast. And it doesn't matter whether you are a surgeon or, you know, athlete or, you know, speaker or singer or whatever. You, you This is it simply. Right. So for all of those. Repet repetition is a key, okay? Repetition is a key. And now let me uh, mention the name. There is a guy, Professor Erickson, and he talks about deliberative learning or deliberative training, yes. how you create the skills in the best you know, way, okay? And he talks about three Fs. That you need to be focused. You need to be here and now, okay? 
uh, absolutely focused. You need to be in the flow. If you are in the flow, which means like, hey, I'm absolutely concentrated and I like what I do, you know, if you are in the flow, you are learning 450% faster. That, that's the way you create myelins faster. And last but not least, the third F is feedback. You need to get feedback immediately. Focus, flow, feedback. That's this is so deliberate. I, I was waiting for the fourth F, but we don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, training, if you will, right? And then we can talk about how you can, you know, create routines or habits. But I, I give you one example. For me, like my morning running is routine because i need to think hey what will be you know my uh you know journey today if it's you know raining what should i wear and so on so that's routine the habit is when i'm wearing something it's automatic it's like for me hey i need to you know get it right and and then the ritual is that i really try like every time to run different, you know, journey to, to, to make sure that I'm, you know, curious, you know, right? Because what I realized, guys, what I realized in running, it's not called flow. It's called runner's high, okay? If you are like, I'm 60 years old, so I'm, I can tell you if I'm running in the morning, first five minutes, I'm really pissed off. Like, <laughs> oh, shit, I should stay at home, you know? I'm like, I should retire or whatever. No, but after like 10, 15 minutes... I'm getting to the runner's high, which means like you really like what you do because endorphin is released. And it, this is about, you know, rituals, really. Like, but you need to, for me, I need to create a little bit, you know, different uh, journey every day to get in, into that, you know, runner's high. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Jan, I'm so glad you said that because I still feel the same every time. It is also very hard work for me at the beginning of a, a run, so I feel better. But I love what you're sharing here because all of this is, in fact, in the brain. So that's why so many people, when we talk about, okay, you know, how do we know how athletes are so successful and yet business people don't always follow that? Things like visualization. We talk a lot about that. Athletes constantly visualize. It would be crazy for them not to in business. Oh, that's weird. Why would I visualize? I just did a group training today and they were like, yeah, what's this visualization thing? I said, let me take you through it and you see how you feel. And I walked them through a successful meeting and they were like, wow, that's powerful. Because you have to work with the mind and yeah. habits, rituals, routines work with the mind. Habits, again, just happen naturally. That's good if you can get into good habits and get into the flow state there. But routines are what you choose when you want to go in and rituals are what you choose when you need to restore and recover. There's a balance between it all that needs to happen. So before Jan and I share more about our rituals, routines, habits, maybe you type into the chat box, what about you all? We always love to hear. Yeah, and absolutely. we've got our absolutely. global audience here because we have Ladislav in India joining us. Very wow, late, wow, wow. Middle of the night. Thank you for joining That's us. A, yeah, that must be nice in India, absolutely. Exactly. And, you know, you always hear about famous morning routines and many people have asked, for example, if Jan drinks a cup of coffee in the morning, for him, that might be a routine, it might even be a habit. I don't know. He kind of half wakes up. And for me, it's a ritual. Why? Because I wake up in the morning and that's the start to my day. And I take in the smell. I'm not just closing my eyes and going, I need caffeine, I need caffeine. I'm actually smelling and enjoying and welcoming the day with that coffee. That's why it's so hard for me when I can't drink a coffee in the morning. <laughs> so for me, it's, it's more of that ritual, spiritual sense where I'm trying to connect with the day, trying to connect with what's going to happen. I'm not going, okay, I got a meeting at nine. So I got to get a coffee in me here and I got to get moving. And let me just go do, you know, let me check my phone. None of that ritual is creating and carving out space. This is the piece that is missing from most people's lives. We have often talked about, we don't have enough time to mentally restore and recover, physically restore, recover also spiritually right and that's why we need to build in rituals some of you of course have rituals how many of you celebrate a holiday what do you do in christmas right you you, you have a celebration or, and so 
we we've built in from religious or sort of uh, traditional culture items we have some rituals but i actively work with teams as a leader of a team as a part of a team i actively ask what are your rituals as a team what do you do as a team to celebrate your connection to you know bigger pictures or have something where um, the start of the new year how do you celebrate right new year's resolutions etc um yeah what what about you what are some of your habits and routines that work really well for you and what are some that haven't worked really well for you <laughs> no i uh what you said it's pretty much true i i tell you what i do for example i mean i i'll share with you what i do uh like me personally and yeah. what i do with athletes when there is then day d for example the olympic games or Wimbledon or whatever you know so what is important, what Lisa said, that, you know, ritual is, you know, something which is for you inspirational, something which is in your soul, basically, right? So if you do something in the morning, which is very inspirational for you, chances are, and you have like great, you know, emotional connection to that. For example, I, I tell you, I'm like recommending my athletes, if they are at the Olympic Games and they have a kids at home, they should, you know, talk to the kids or at least watch some photos or whatever, because this is something they have, you know, family is something really big. OK, so once you have like that spiritual energy, the chances are that your mental energy will be also uplifted. You will feel like, hey, I feel really good. If your mental energy, the way you think, the way you concentrate is good, the chances are that your emotional energy will be good. And if you will have a lot of positive, you know, emotions. And if your emotions are good because your brain is like chemistry, you know, you that means that your body will be fine because, you know, all of those uh, endorphins and dopamines are released and you will be fine. So don't underestimate, you know, small things in the morning. OK, what I do, for example, and I, I must tell you, I was like 10 years ago when I started to do it. It was like, you know, against my persuasion. Okay, I said, this is not. But basically, somebody told me, somebody told me, hey, you don't like yourself. In order to like other people, you need to like yourself first. Okay. Because I would maximize or whatever. So in the morning, I go and I go like, I, I'm, I'm saying three things. I like me, I love me, and I live in the present moment. Those are the three things I do. Okay, and then then I start my day. I have like the vision, you know, vision board, whatever I do, like breathing uh, techniques, and I do my running, whatever. But this is how I start. And the same thing, I'm recommending other people. You they you need to mix the right, you know, chemical cocktail in your brain. Maybe you feel like uh, like for two days because I was you know running quite fast. For two days, I'm feeling like pain in my back, okay? But for me, like, pain is privilege. Pain is not punishment. It's a privilege, you know, to feel pain, right? If you don't, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I mean, pain not only physical, but also mental. Because if you learn something new, it's a painful, you know, right? I mean, I learned so many things, like, during the last two, three years, you know, especially in the in the mental coaching, you know, right? But it's, it's yeah, it is painful. You need to learn a lot of new things, but... This is it. That's what it. Uh, that's what it takes. But once you know you mix that right cocktail in the morning, chances are that your day will be really you know good one. If it's not the case, and you like immediately will start. If your routine is really like I do emails on the toilet, the first thing I do. That's not good routine, you know. And right? everybody who's watching today was like, "Oh my God, how do you know? Wait, I do do that, yeah." Unfortunately, because then it, it, your amygdala, the uh, you know emotional part of the brain, is jumping on negative issues, and you will have, oh, that's gonna to be a really bad day, you know, right? So really, start with something good. That's number one. And if it's like you know routine, if if you repeat it, your brain likes very much structure. Your brain likes very much. Hey, I do it like every day, you know. That's when the dopamine is released. And dopamine and endorphin together, that's a good, you know, mix in the morning. And then if you have like, you know, breakfast with your family and you praise each other, serotonin is released and oxytocin, which is the chemical and hormone for the love and the yeah. trust. And then, 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 
then you go and nobody can piss you in your job, you know. <laughs> you fly in high, high in the sky. Yeah. Exactly. No, it, it's it, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it is like that. Believe me, you can really, uh, you can, you know, mix your own, you know, chemical, you know, and hormonal mix in your brain. You are responsible for that, you know, right? Because people exactly. very often are saying, hey, I'm pissed off because that guy behaves in that way. I have a really bad mood. But you are responsible for your mood because you are. There's something which we call in psychology uh, freedom of choice. It's your freedom of choice how you will react. If that guy is stupid, don't be stupid. Don't have a stupid reaction. You know, go and work on something you know else. And it's the same. Like I, I very often um, was like trying to persuade somebody. And now I'm saying, hey. I want to work with the people who want to work with me. This is it. You know, life is very short, you know, to spend a lot of time with people. I mean, that's fine. If you prefer somebody else, that's absolutely okay, but we don't need to waste time yet. Exactly. And I think, you know, what's so hard for people, because these three different things, most of us really beforehand probably didn't differentiate. It's hard. We, oh, we always hear habits, you know, create our excellence. So everybody tries to create these wonderful habits, exactly like you said. But here's why most people fail because they don't know a habit, just you can make it automated. It will come naturally. Some routines will never become a habit. They will always be difficult. I agree. <laughs> and so people need to understand if you're thinking, oh, but this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, forget it, I give up, it's always too hard. Change the way, reset your expectations and change the way you look at that. It's supposed to be hard. It takes a little bit of discipline, but it's coming from a place of choice. And Jan said it so perfectly. It is easy when someone is yelling at you and, you know, for you to get defensive and want to yell back. That's easy. Easy. That's an automatic that could be a habit that you have. It's much harder to make a conscious choice to say, I'm just going to breathe. I'm going to be responsible for how I respond and I'm going to move on. Right. And that's not necessarily a habit because it really takes a lot of work when you're really triggered. So that is a routine. A routine will always take a little bit of work. So if you're feeling like this is hard and Jan said, then great. It's a privilege to have that pain. It's a privilege to have this be hard because you can still choose to do it anyway. And routines can have that. That's normal for a routine. So you don't have to expect it to get quote unquote easier or make everything a habit. Some things you can program, but other things you can't. So, really, you know, let that expectation go. Yeah. So, Mika is saying, I, I'll put it on the... Can you bring it up? Yeah. Yeah, I will bring it up. Yeah. I also love doing ice cold shower. Me too. You know, straight after leaving the bed. Perfect. And on the way to work, I listen to funny podcasts like Steve Harvey Morning Show. That's a good one. Or Alpha Blokes Podcast. Yeah, it did. this is good, you know, because... I, I generally, you know, cold water uh, will bring you much more, you know, energy and you feel really good, you know, right? And as the same with those like morning shows, it's really, you know, good to listen something. I, I usually listen like 90, 80 to 90% is some serious stuff, but it's like, you know, uh, personal development, if you will. But like 20%, probably once a week, I listen, you know, some funny stuff also you know right yeah you have to mix it up you gotta have some fun in life we can't always be all serious and you know a lot of times yeah i'm sure you feel the same a lot of times clients ask us about so how do we set these habits and routines because you know it's very easy it's not like this is earth shattering new rocket science when we say hey have a morning routine don't pick up your phone you know that okay you've heard it all you know everybody knows that but we don't do it. (laughs) So the real trick is not knowing what to do, which is here, but the real trick is getting motivated to do it. How do I, because it will, if it's a routine and not a habit, it will take motivation because you'll have to re-choose it. It will feel uncomfortable. It will feel kind of hard. So how do we work on that motivation to say, I really want to do that? 
And that is something that all of you, you know, depending on what new habit or new routine you want to create, you have to get strongly committed and motivated so that if things get hard, if you get knocked off track, you choose to come back. Otherwise, you do things like quit smoking for a week and then you're like, yeah, but I like smoking, so I'm just going to go back, <laughs> right? I was eating healthy. It was really great, but I really want that chocolate chip cookie now, so forget it. Diet's off. <laughs> Absolutely. Andy, uh, you know, brain doesn't work linearly. Right? Brain works uh, in associative way. So it, it's easier for you to create new habits and make that new habit connected to, to some existing habit already, okay? Yeah. Give you one stupid example. I wanted like a year ago, I said, I'm not gonna to eat after 7 p.m. because, uh, you know, I wanted to have a good energy in the morning, okay? Now I, I bought, you know, like a year ago, Aura Ring, and Aura is really tough, you know? If yesterday I was eating at eight, we were having some dinner with some friends, and immediately, I, 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 I'm always like optimal. Yesterday, uh, this morning, I was good only because your, you know, uh, uh, your resting heart rate uh, goes down, you know, much slower if you are eating, you know, longer, right? So anyway, so what I did, I because I like very much to like uh, uh, um, use my electronic toothbrush, you know, right? Uh, so I'm like, uh, you know, uh, brushing my teeth seven o'clock and for me which i like and it's, it's a good you know habit and i really like it i don't like to do it manually but with that electronic i love it you know. and seven o'clock i do it like for five seven minutes and seven o'clock that means like i'm not eating anymore so and this more or less yesterday it was you know obviously some exception but more or less i created you know new habit uh you know which I connected to the existing habit, which I, you know, like uh, very much, right? Because that's, uh, it is always, you know, uh, tougher to repeat it. You need to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Absolutely. Exactly. And so, you know, I, I love what you're saying here, which is first tie it to something that already exists to make it easy. One of the biggest hurdles to doing a new habit or routine is just we always your brain wants to we said survive and it wants to conserve energy. It doesn't right. want to spend a lot of new energy on something that might be a little bit hard. So it's going to try to convince you. Do you really need to do that? Right. Our brains love to stay the same. Yeah. So do we really need to change something? So the answer is yes. That's why we said you have to find your motivation, right? So I know I want to feel so good in the morning. I'm motivated by that. So I'm not going to eat late at night. Makes perfect sense. Now, then we tie it to something and make it just it happens seven o'clock. This is what happens at seven o'clock and I'm done. And even if one day it breaks because you have to go to dinner with friends, you come back, not because, oh, I have to force myself, but you like it and you want it. It's a habit for you. Absolutely. When no, you're trying Lisa, to... Lisa said, one, Lisa said one, sorry, one important thing, and it's about, you know, our mental energy. Your mental energy in, in the morning is much higher, obviously. So if you wanted to create something new like exercise or running, it's easier to do it in the morning. And I'm hearing you like saying, hey, but I'm sleeping in the morning because I'm working till the midnight, whatever, you know, right? I, I can tell you, you can change that. And it, the other thing is, if if you create some habit, okay, whatever you, whatever new you learn, for example, this session with me and Lisa goes to your short-term memory. If you wanted to rewrote it, rewrite it to the long-term memory, it takes some amount of the deep sleep, okay? And the deep sleep is, you know, uh, if we are sleeping in like 90 minutes, you know, chunks, okay, where the deep sleep is uh, represented mostly before midnight or after the midnight, like in the morning, if three, two o'clock in the morning, it's REM mainly, you know, or the, the light sleep. Okay, so okay. it's good to go to the bed before the midnight if you want to learn something new or, you know, to get uh, memorize something, stuff like that. And it's the same with creating the habits, right? Because you're your mental energy is finite so it's it's much tougher if you are like tired if you go home 
bro, I'm so tired and now I need to go to the gym or I need to go to the, you know, run. Mm -hmm. Then, and you need to be tough with yourself and you need to have somebody, I call it accountability partner, mm -hmm. okay? That would be like, if, if I would live in Zurich or Lisa in Prague and we would like to start to run, I would call, call each other, hey, we, we go, we go, because we are like dependent on one to each other. We, we go, this is accountability partner, right? He can, you know, he yeah. keep you accountable. Hey, you promise that he can do it with you or he, he just can challenge you. Hey, Jan, by the way, what do we agree? Did you do it? You know, right? So Exactly. And um, by the way, don't get a running buddy or an accountability buddy who then is like, hey, should we not go? The weather's no, no. pretty bad. Because then you're like, yeah, we shouldn't go. And then they bring you down. <laughs> um. <laughs> By the way, I know you both are busy, but how about to make some podcasts together? I need something to listen on the way to work. Very funny that you mention it. Jan and yeah. I were talking about, first of all, we're going to see about making this a podcast so we can sort of stream it out. And maybe we do it shorter and more often. I don't know. I like that plan. Why do I know that? What you hear over and over, when you hear it repeated, again, yes. it starts to sit in your brain. The first time you hear it, okay. The second time you hear it, your brain's like, oh, I remember that. The third time, hmm, there's something interesting. The fourth time is when you really start to say, okay, maybe I'll do something with that. I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I do a lot of, like here, you know, I have a lot of like notes, you know, on my own, right? But from those podcasts, I have my, you know, recorder. So I'm like recording whatever I like, the key things, putting it down. And I can tell you, I'm like listening to those podcasts. And then in one month, I listen it again, you know. And, it, and it, it's about synopsis, creating new, you know, synopsis. And then if you listen it second, third time, you you suddenly start to use it, you know, right? Because there is something, guys, which which is very important, like forming new habits or learning from the best. You know, you can learn. I mean, everybody can learn. I I, I spent like one month with uh, Tim Grover, who was a personal coach for Michael Jordan, and he said everybody can do it. Michael was like getting up four o'clock in the morning, then four thirty he was in the gym, and he was like, you know, uh, shooting the the uh, the, the free uh, uh, flows and and stuff like that. You know, right? So anyway, yeah. but what I wanted to say, we have so-called mirror neurons. So we are mirroring what is happening around us. Okay. So if you watch or listen somebody which what what is really you know good, suddenly you will start to do it and use it. You know that's the that's the point. We as humans, we like to do what we think is normal. Right. Yeah. Without even knowing it, we wait for permission. Is this socially acceptable? So if you're hanging out with a certain group of people who's trying to bring you down, you go, OK, that's not like I can't do that. Oh, I don't want to be the teacher's pet. I'll be, you know, the one who's failing classes. But if you start to hang around and you start to have in your mind, and even if it's just podcasts, even if you have the people who are saying, go more, do more, you can do this, take a rest, right? Have Make sure spirituality is a part of your practice. And it doesn't, it, it all of a sudden just becomes normal for you. This is how you start to develop risk tolerance. This is start how you start to develop, you know, going for bigger, developing your talent, changing your routines, because it starts to become normalized. That's why we wanted to know here if anyone wants to share their routines. It's not just Absolutely. Lisa and Jan who have routines yeah. or habits or rituals. It's yeah, all of share, you. Share, guys, share with us. There's like 30 people all together. So share with us some of your, you know, routines or, you know, habits or. Yes. Or rituals, you know, whatever you have, you know. Absolutely. And and Michal saying we got to cut off maybe and just say <laughs> we're gonna do it. <laughs> Would be very fun. We'll have we'll we'll we'll, we'll have something to discuss after this. If we if we talk about the impact of environment and other people on our you know routines, habits, and rituals, okay, there is something called epigenetics. Which means like, I mean, when I was in the school, we basically learned that uh, genes are genes. Genes are like, this is your blueprint and this is it. It's not true, actually. One of the first guy who basically showed that it's quite, you know, different was my friend Bruce Lipton. Bruce, by the way, is coming to Prague. He will have a, you know, seminar August 6th, so I'll meet him again. It's a public seminar. It's, if you go to 
Bruce Lipton dot CZ. Uh, you can you know go there, right? Anyway, so Bruce basically what he did, he took two identical genetical materials, but he put them in two different environments. Okay, and suddenly you know some cells were created in the first you know petri dish, and absolutely different cells in the other. So he figured out that it's not about the genes. Genes are not, you know, starting themselves, but environment, the way you think, what you do is starting like 95% of the genes. And that's the same with the talent genes, by the way. Your talent genes are only potential. Unless you will train your talent, it will be never developed in the strengths. This is it, you know, right? You need to, it's all about repetition, right? Because all like Michael Jordan, for sure he was talented, okay? But he created legend because he, you know, made a lot of repetition, but he made much more repetition than the other guys. You know, that's for sure. Yeah. But you're so right that what is surrounding us actually influences our habits without us being conscious of it. So listen right. again, um, if someone in your circle of friends or even a friend of a friend gets divorced, you are statistically more likely to start considering and get a divorce. Right. So a lot of what shapes what we do is actually unconscious. You will if your friends are overweight, you will find it acceptable to become more overweight and you'll eat more. Sure. Right. So like what is around us, what we surround ourselves with changes what we're mm. motivated to do. So hopefully as you listen to Jan and me and we're talking about morning routines and we're talking about workouts and we're talking about not picking up your phone first thing in the morning. We're hoping to normalize that for you and start to slowly change habits because here's the thing, habits, routines, rituals, unless you have like a major life trauma, you're probably not going to change everything all at once, right? Unless you, you know, have a health scare or you get a divorce or someone dies, it's much better for you to say, I'm going to pick one thing and I'm going to work on that. And just focus on that. So if you don't have a morning routine, don't worry about having 14 different things added to your morning routine. Add one thing. Get used to that. Make it comfortable. Have it become somewhat of a habit. And then you add one more thing. Absolutely. And if you do that over time, you will incrementally and one year later, I promise you, if you start, it's July 7th. 2022 if you start to, and you check in july 7 2023 and every month you've just changed one tiny thing you'll be a different person we underestimate that incremental value here so, is some basil this is very interesting it, it gives hope to people to test and push their potential absolutely right. because everybody got the genes that means that everybody got a talent okay and everybody everybody in the world can achieve much more than he or she think which can be achieved. Because I tell you why. There's something called negative bias. Our amygdala, which is, you know, emotional part of the brain, is five to ten times faster than your uh, rational part of the brain, logical part of the brain, neocortex, which means that amygdala is telling you, you know, uh, play it safe. You should not have those expectations. Play it safe. What if the other people, there's something called FOPO, fear of other people's opinion, right? Whoever was, was making some mistake in the past when we were living in those, you know, groups like hunters and, uh, you know, uh, right in the, in, the, in the groups and somebody made some mistake and they would push you out of the group, you would not survive. So we, we think that if other people would not accept us, that we would die, basically. That's in our subconsciousness. That's why our amygdala is pushing our expectations, you know, down. And that's wrong, you know, right? Every Everybody should have a dream. Then we should have, you know, our goals and use their talents to achieve those goals and so on, right? Uh, and uh, But this is it. This is definitely true uh, that, you know, everybody got, you know, potential. I mean... If you think that if Ronaldo would decide when he was four years old, if Ronaldo would decide, hey, I want to be a singer, maybe he would sing today somewhere in, you know, Madeira, you know, right, in some pub or maybe in Lisbon. But no, no, he's not sculptor, he's not engineer, he's not singer, he's not, you know, scientist. 
he is best football player in the world. Or one of the best now, maybe, right? So anyway, <laughs> he decided, hey, I will follow my heart, basically. I will follow my talent. What is, I, and, you know, uh, that's a very inspirational story. We have many stories like that. I mean, people who are real legends, they are never legends because of the fact that they play their weaknesses. They play their talents. I mean, just they eliminated weaknesses in the way like, okay, you learn it on, on some way, but your weaknesses can be eliminated by somebody else's talents in the team and the other way around, right? You know, you, you're covering it. But th this is a... Uh, uh, th th this is a huge chance. Unfortunately, majority of the people, even people who are like university degree, you know, educated, they don't know about epigenetics. They think that, hey, because my dad and my mom were like that and I was living in the, you know, village. Come on. I was living in the village up to 20 years, you know, old. I was almost fired from the university. And then I worked 10 years with Bill Gates and I was one of the big guys, you know, in Microsoft. And I do now uh, quite interesting things. It's it's all about, you know, your brain, what you can, you know, imagine. And people sometimes are putting a lot of limitations in their brains. OK, I mean, my slogan, aim to the moon. If you miss the moon, you will still end up among the stars. And you don't know what is your moon, what are your stars. Unless you try, you know, we a lot of people they don't try, even you know, right? Try and you will see, you know, right? And yeah, absolutely. And it's exactly that. I mean, all of us, we we take our strengths, we take our talents. I love that because I would have never been a great theoretical physicist, it just mm. would not have happened. Yeah, <laughs> but you double down on your strengths, on your talents, but then you have to work your butt off, absolutely. Right? And this, this, you know, formula that you gave us at the beginning is exactly right. But the way that you work, not everything can be hard work for your brain. Not everything can be all about uh, willpower because willpower is by uh, Jan said, by the end of the day, you're exhausted. It's very energy draining. So when you can set habits and routines to get you focused, you don't have to waste a lot of brain energy on that because you just do it, you do it, you do it. And then the spiritual part is the letting go. Okay, I can decompress, I can relax. And once you are focused and I go and I do it and then I have a relax, that is how you can run your life to become the best and the best and the best. And there are so many stories. So you definitely, I mean, I, I get and type into the chat box if you want to share your own stories there. But I have something similar to Jan. You know, I grew up uh, outside of New York City in a nice suburban area. And everyone expected, you know, it was nice. It was a, a okay uh, place to grow right. up. Everybody assumed I would be a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, something like that. Something highly educated. But nothing like, you know, shaking the earth. And now they go, OK, but how did you build a business and why are, you know, royalty coming to you for coaching advice? Like, who are you like a, a random girl from Long Island? Right. Like, why you? And it, the answer is just why not me? I found my strength. I found the talent and I developed it. And when we don't have to follow in our parents' footsteps, I mean, my dad was an English professor. I didn't do anything in that academic space. Right. But when you find your path and you're going to it, then the habits and the routines and the rituals also become um, you're motivated because it's something that is self-fulfilling. You do it, you do it well, then you crave. So I want to learn more. How can I do it even better? So when we said habits, rituals, routines, when they feel very hard, it's because you're not that connected to the motivation reconnect, get excited, get the goal, drive yourself towards something bigger. I get it. If you have a corporate job that you kind of hate and you're kind of miserable in your life and your relationship's just okay. And it's like another day. I just need an escape. I just need to, I can get, I can see why people choose the zombie approach, but you need to understand this is your life and get motivated to take yeah. it back. And and following what some put there about you know potential, Lisa said about you know motivation, right? I think if you if you connect your routines, habit, and rituals to, to your meaning in your life, that's the best. Then you have your routines, habits, and rituals for the life, basically, right? 
because the meaning in in our lives is something which is really you know our own engine there are two books two good books i can recommend lisa may, may recommend some other books victor frankel the man search for meaning great book victor frankel survived he was a jewish uh, psychiatrist austrian origin he survived a couple of Nazi camps, you know, and he wrote a nice book about the meaning in your life. And he was basically saying, if you have a meaning in your life, you can survive everything. And the life is not about what is happening to you, but about your reaction to what is happening to you. Yes. That's, he, he is basically the author of the concept freedom of choice. It's a freedom of choice how you will re I will react. And the second book is from Clay Christensen. Unfortunately, he passed away last year. Uh, he was a professor at Harvard, and, and the name of the book is How You Will Measure Your Life, okay? And the, the main thought of the book is, well, okay, if you are, like, dying and you go to the heaven, they will not ask you how many cars did you drive, how many, you know, girlfriends did you have, you know, how much money you made. They ask you how many people did you help, Okay. And the, the, the thing is, I had a privilege for 10 years to work with the guy who was the richest person in the world. You know, he was one of the most famous in the world. And I really studied like what success has to do with happiness. And I can tell you that the happiest people are those who are making other people happy through something they love. OK, through something they really like. What is their meaning? They can make happy other people through their own you know, meaning. This is it. If you will find a meaning in your life, this is it, you know, right? And now there is a small tool. It's a, like free of charge, you know, from my book, The Positive Leader, how you can find your meaning. It has to do with uh, what some talks about potential and, and the talents. OK, you have three circles. Talents, you know, right? You can figure out talents. You can do the test from Gallup, Strengths Finder, or you can just figure out, hey, what is giving you energy? Those are usually your talents. So, talents is the first circle. The second circle is your passions. This is like those are your talents, and this is how you use them to get you in the flow with, through the yes. different. So those are talents. Those are passions. But you know, your flow does not mean yet this is my, you know, uh, meaning, okay? Because you need to represent uh, other, you know, people there. And so the third circle, it's your personal values because your personal values reflecting what are reflecting what you are admiring the other people because we have those mirror neurons. So if you take like five people and one thing per each and every person, those are your personal values. And when those three circles are overlapping, this is your meaning. This is, your meaning is like, like what, what is your flow and how you are helping, you know, other people through your own flow, you know, right? Like making other people happy through something you love, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the meaning. And if you, if you do it, if you do it, then your, you know, habits, routines and rituals around that are really easy to create because you feel that energy. You feel that energy. Yes. And I mean, Jan and I both love this concept of peak performance. I think we're both interested in it for ourselves, but we like to bring it to others. That's what we coach on, right? It's how to, how to be at our best. And when we talk about what's our potential and how do we fulfill our potential, you have to do it with body and mind and nutrition and sleep. And, you know, it's just not possible for you to fulfill your potential without that stuff. So it's very easy then when we're really connected to that goal, it's very easy to say, Say after this, I've had a very long week and I have another long day tomorrow. Exactly. I'm gonna go to bed, right? It'll be nine o'clock after this, which is like an old lady bedtime, and I'm super happy about that because I want that for myself. I'm not complaining, I'm not mad, I'm choosing, I'm excited because I'm so connected to the goal. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Um and one of the sort of tests that I have for myself when I'm in that mood, when I don't have willpower and I don't want to do something is I just ask myself, when you look in the mirror at the end of the day today, or at the end of the week, or at the end of the month, or at the end of your life, are you going to be able to say, I feel proud? So if I'm acting in a way where I don't feel proud, I just have that noticing. Am I going to feel proud at the end of the day when I look in the mirror? If not, let me choose a different behavior. So if I'm yelling at my kids, I don't feel proud about this. Okay. Um, I'm tired and I want to quit, you know, doing something client work. And I'm like, 
no, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to feel proud that I've gotten this done. So for me, that's one easy trick to help me to stick to a routine or something it is that I want to do, even when my willpower wants to tell me, you don't want to do this. Come on, just quit. It's, you know, you know. I just say, is this who I want to be? Does this make me proud? And you'd be surprised if you just check in with yourself, you can push yourself to new limits. And then, by the way, it's like, oh, I was really tired, but I got that amazing thing done. Yes, then you are really proud. I have a bit of a routine where every once in a while I'll celebrate, wow, what are all the things that I accomplished? Whether it's a month or a quarter, it's not so exact. But you have to look back and go, I was here and I got here. And you have to celebrate that because that will reinforce the habits are working, the routines are working, the rituals are working. And it gives you, again, that motivation, that sense of accomplishment. And it's connected to a bigger purpose. What could be better? Look, uh, I returned from Wimbledon. And one thing which Novak Djokovic was doing in the quarterfinal, he lost first two sets to Yannick Sinner. That's a great, you know, player from Italy. So he was losing 2-0. Djokovic was losing 2-0 two, two days ago. And he went to the toilet. Okay. And he had this, you know, self-talk against the, the mirror. Okay. And he said that was basically a break point. And he, he won three, two. Okay. But he said, I talked to me like on mirror and I, I said, hey, this is absolutely unacceptable, you know, performance. You need to go that, that, that. And he started to play and he, he beaten him, you know, right? I mean, uh, it, it is, uh, this is, you know, amazing what, uh, what you can do. It, it's, it, it's basically uh, not giving up and not accept, you know, uh, give you, uh, it's, it's in the check, but I will, you know, uh, translate it. I, I put the post today on Instagram. That if your if your internal voice is telling you you will not you know make it, you don't need to listen to your internal voice. And then then I then I'm saying then I say if if you wanted to succeed in your life, you need to start to doubt about your doubts. Yes, yes, good one. Because all guys, I mean, if you think about it, if you think about Djokovic, Federer, or you know Nadal, Michael Jordan. They are masters in doubting their doubts, okay? Because the the thing is, I mean, they are like losing 2-0, which is like almost, it's like best of the five, right? But anyway, so if, if you are losing, if, normally, if you are like, if if would be, if that would be normal tournament, Djokovic would be gone, uh, Nadal would be gone. Now they are like losing 2-0, which means like, hey, Warming up is like finishing, <laughs> and we just start to work. You know, right? it's like amazing. And I'm not, I'm not like making fun out of that, but out of the other players. But I'm just saying that they never accept to like give up, and they really play till the last ball. And this is it. It's like life, you know, right? Is that that's the same thing? Yes. Stay connected to your goals, to your motivation. Tie your habits there and tie your routines, your discipline there. Because your habits are connected to the present moment. That, because you, whatever you will do in your life, you need to be. And if you wanted to have a peak performance in sport, in business, in medicine, science, whatever, you know, right? You need to be concentrated. You need to be in the present moment, right? And if you want to be in the present moment, routines, habits, and rituals are right thing to do because it's like, you know, automatic. Even though like routines, you need to think about it, but it's because you do it so many times, you know, right? Exactly. It is. This is it. This is it. Exactly. Because there is a there is a great, uh, you know, piece. I, I just uh, did some, you know, training on mental toughness for the for the tennis, tennis coaches. And... Uh, and the guy explained the concept that, you know, expectations are very often killing your self-confidence. And I think it's very much true. OK, yeah. it's good to have like high expectations from your life. But if you, for example, play or if you present, you need to concentrate on the process. You know, if you concentrate, hey, it's, your expectation is I need to, you know, win. Right. Then suddenly we say, oh, OK, I need to win. That means for me, I should not play that aggressively. Maybe, you know, right. And I should not miss and and you will not be concentrated and you are done. 
you know, like the way do you the way how you build your you know self confidence is really to concentrate one point after the other, concentrate on the process. I mean, our predecessors they were not stupid at all. If you if you look at the Stoics, a couple of thousand years ago, they were saying in your life you should concentrate only on the things you can really influence. Okay. If you know Nadal or Djokovic, they go and they play with somebody as they are getting questions. Hey, that guy is playing really like fantastic. It will be very tough match for you. They are usually saying, "I cannot influence the other guy performance or the you know uh, empire uh, performance. I can influence only my performance, so I will play you know my best." And even yes. though they are not playing always like 100 percent they are winning because they trust themselves they trust they 90 percent or 80 percent i can still beat with my 80 percent 100 percent of the of my opponent this is it this is it you know right this is yes. it and it, it, it is really about rituals habit and uh and uh, you know routine. i mean what what rafa is doing you know right with his like with his T-shirt, with the shorts, with those bottles, you know, yes. <laughs> putting him back into the present moment. But that's exactly it. And one other tip for all of you who are wondering, how do I set up this new habit routine? How do I get to this present moment? How do I have a Nadal moment? Tie it to some music. That's why Jan and I are always dancing right before exactly. we're in here, right? It that's giving you energy. You it gives you an energy, but it also gives you a cue. So if you yeah. have any of you have heard of Pavlov's dogs, they used to ring a bell and then right. feed the dogs, ring a bell, exactly. feed the dogs, ring a bell, feed the dogs. And then they would ring a bell and the dogs would be salivating because they know what to expect. So use music in the same way for yourself at your bedtime routine. When you get to your toothbrushing stage, if you want to start calming down, have a, da a music playlist that's for the bedtime. And you just put it on, I and agree. then you're you will train your body. That will I, become I, a very habit. often. I mean, very often I would not exercise with like you know weights and with some you know uh, other stuff if I would not have a music. That music is like giving me you know energy, and I immediately. Yeah. I, I very often I have one YouTube like you know uh, I switch off the uh, the, uh, the, the sound you know right. I, I see only people and I have, you know, on, on my background, I have another, you know, music. That's what I do usually. Yeah. And it, it's really, it, it's really good. Or on my, you know, I have like stationary, I, I do a lot of biking, you know, outside, but during the uh, winter, I have a stationary bike and it's like go for one and one and a half hour. It's tough. But if you have like, you know, some music, some, you know, TV, watching and doing something else, it's perfect, you know. Yes, exactly. And your muscles remember that. So you can tie your habits. Again, don't make it feel hard. Make it easy. When you hear pump up music, your body's automatically going to pump up. It's going to remember the last time you were on a bike. It's going to start sending, right? Your brain is smart. It's a prediction machine. It's predicting you're going to need some energy for, you know, to pump some iron or whatever. And then you feel ready. So again, if it feels hard, find easy ways to cue your body to make it happen. Um, same for when, when I have to go for a run and I'm really tired, I'll say, you just have to put on the workout clothes. And then if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. But once I put them on, okay, Absolutely. you just have to put the shoes on. Okay. But once the shoes are on, the body's pumping, right? So listen, maybe... listen, 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 here is the point. Uh, I used to, I used to have like excuse if, if it was you know, like raining, I said, well, I have those nice, you know, shoes and it's like raining. I have like three pairs, four pairs and I'm running in. Okay. Now I have like two raining shoes. If it's really raining heavily, those are one shoes and one shoes if it's like, you know, uh, raining. So I, I run anyway, you know, so. That's it. So if you want to stick to your routines and your habits, this is such a great closing that we haven't discussed yet. Absolutely. Make a plan for when you're going to try to wiggle out of it. Oh, well, it's raining. I don't want to ruin my shoes. Perfect. How can you solve for that? I'll get rain shoes, right? Often when I'm working with coaching clients and we're talking about accountabilities, one of the major questions that I'll ask is, okay, what are you committed to doing? What's your intention? Great. What's the most likely thing that's going to stop you from actually doing this, right? Oh, well, I'm not going to have time and my wife's going to want this from yeah, me yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, 
Great. Now let's talk through it. So we have an action plan for when those things come up so they don't stop you. Once you start to realize it's actually not that hard to build a new habit and a routine, you just get motivated, you figure out the roadblocks in advance and you just do it. You start to realize I can do this. And then you're motivated to do that more and more and more and more and more. And all of a sudden you have these amazing habits, routines, and very important build rituals into your life as well. Exactly. And you will find your way to success and you'll find your way to restoration, which ultimately is what will give you peak performance above and beyond what others are doing. Perfect. That was great conclusion. So guys, thank you very much. And we see you in two weeks. Uh, yeah. As Lisa said, uh, Lisa is kind enough and she will, <laughs> she will agree that she will prepare some uh, podcast out of those, you know, right? She will, yes. she will create some intro and uh, so we exactly. will, don't worry, step by step, we will get there. <laughs> it's coming your way. All right, yes. everyone, really. have, a, have a great night. And thanks to our friends in India. Have a very great night. Go to sleep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon.